Hello and welcome to part three of this patterning series. Um, and in this part, we're going to talk about tuck stitch. Um, now, if you've seen the first couple of parts, then you will um, uh, remember me talking about slip stitch. And tuck stitch is very, very similar. In fact, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So we're going to start, um, as we did last time, by shifting over to the carriage. Um, and this time, uh, we're going to push in these two buttons, which are the tuck buttons. Okay, um, again, if you have a knit master, I will say that you rotate the um, the, 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 the little lever um, on the dial, and I think it goes to T for tuck on most models. Okay, and we're gonna start off doing literally exactly what we did um, with the slip stitch. We're going to do a one by one um, tuck pattern. And when I do that, okay, so let, let, let's do this and see what happens. Now, I don't know if you can see, I'm just going to take this phone, and really go in, but you can see, instead of ignoring half of the stitches, what we've actually done is um, every um, tuck stitch has not knitted, it's just put a little loop into the needle. So wh wh where the slip stitches just ignored it and went straight past the tuck stitches, put a little loop into the needle, which we then are going to knit through. And let's do, we're gonna do 10 rows of that like we did last time. And we're going to see what effect that ends up with, okay? Because, of course, when you knit the needle through, you end up pulling that little loop into a sort of, um, well, into a tuck pattern. So we'll do our ten rows. Um, I can see, by the way, it's gone wrong at the right-hand end, and I, I am aware of that. But again, we're only playing. Okay, so that's ten rows. Now, let's have a look and see what it looks like. Now, actually, can you see, instead of having little floats all, all, all over the place, you get these little things where it's pulled up. And another highly relevant thing is going to be that um, uh, how, uh, how it compares to 10 rows of plain knitting. So again, we're going to do 10 rows of plain knitting, and then we can have a look and see. So here's our 10 rows. Now, one of the things about tuck stitch is that um, because it pulls a little loop up, um, it makes the whole knitting significantly, um, uh, so there's significantly more fabric in it. And the effect that that has is, you can see, unlike slip stitch, where it was about half the height, with tuck stitch, it's about um, the, uh, the same height. A little bit less, but what you can see is that it's much, much wider. So because you've got all this extra extra knitting, it makes the whole thing a lot looser and it ends up a lot wider. So that's one thing. There's your standard tuck pattern. Very lovely it is too. Um, and uh, that is actually quite a nice pattern to have on a jumper. And again, it's thicker like, like slip stitches. And again, um, it can be done in various shapes. Now, if you remember with the slip stitch one, we just did like one needle at a time and we moved it left and right. Um, and we're going to do roughly the same thing again, but this time what we're going to do is um, we are going to, I'm going to do one by one, but I'm going to miss one of them out. So in fact, what's going to happen is we're going to have a, um, a plain stitch zigzagging backwards and forwards okay um it's you know you, you, it doesn't matter whether you do it plain or whether you do it you know mostly tuck and, and a little bit plain or mostly plain and a little bit tuck so i just thought it'd be fun to do something slightly different so let's 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 try it and see what happens can you see i've got one missing every now and again actually that's not what i want to do um i want to do the other way around so um, because don't forget the ones that come forward are the ones that knit. So I don't want to tuck extra stitches. So let me just knit a couple of rows and we'll do that again. Um, I want it to knit extra stitches. There you go. So can you see it's going to tuck loads and then knit the extra stitches. Is that right? Yes, the ones that are forward knit. So let's, let, let's try it and see what happens. And we're going to zig it all to the right. Okay, and then let's dig it back again. Oh, 
Okay, so let's have a look at that. Now, again, can you see what we've actually got is a plain knitting, a normal knitting stitch, excuse my dirty hands, but you know, that's what happens when you restore machines, um, that's zigging and zagging backwards and forwards. I think that's quite a nice little effect though. It's subtle, but it's nice. Now, if you remember with the slip stitch one, we then had to ask ourselves the question, um, uh, what happens if you tuck or slip or whatever, lots of stitches next to each other, horizontally and then vertically. And actually, tuck stitch is slightly more restrictive than slip stitch in that respect. So, just knit it out a bit. So our first question is, what happens if you tuck loads of stitches together? Okay, next to each other. So can you see, we're going to tuck all the ones that are back, um, four stitches next to each other. Let's do that and see what happens. Now, the first thing you should be able to see is, I mean, it's more difficult to see because uh, at this distance, a, a normal knitted stitch and a tuck stitch look like each other, but I've got four loops that are right next to each other. Okay, now that's not necessarily a great idea. Um, you will be able to see in a minute that it has a very high chance of going sideways, which is in fact it is doing now. Oh dear. Okay, now. Oh dear. Right, now can you see what we have got here is a mess, okay? Tuck stitch does not like to have lots of stitches tucked next to each other and it is now completely stuck. It's absolutely fouled up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and come back to you when I've sorted it out. Welcome back. Right, so um, what have we learned from that? You can't tuck stitches next to each other, okay? Um, you can have a maximum of two stitches that are tucking next to each other, um, uh, or you will get problems. So, if your tuck stitch looks anything like this, okay, then you will be in trouble. Um, do you remember the ones that come forward, knit, they're fine, but look, there's, um, round here we've got tuck, 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 three next to each other. That is a bad idea, don't do that. Maximum of two, preferably one. Right, next question. Can you, in fact, um, uh, tuck and tuck and tuck um, lots and lots and lots of times? Well, let's have a look and see. Okay, so uh, we're, we're doing the vertical rule quite nicely. There's, there's not more than one needle at a time. Okay, so we're gonna tuck, okay? And I'm going to tuck in exactly the same place. Now, what we've done there is we've now put two loops of yarn into each of these needles. Okay, so we've got the original stitch and then a loop and then another loop. And I don't know if you can see, but already those needles are getting really rather full. I am going to try a third row. Hmm. And then I'm going to do a plain row to knit them out. Okay, I'll do that again and see what happens. Um, let's go over here. And then a plain row. Knit it out. Let's try that again. And then a plain row. Okay, and actually we're gonna do a few plain rows just to get it out there. Okay, now actually, that's a really funky pattern. I really like that. But you can see you're pushing the boundaries of just how much yarn you can physically get into a stitch. Okay, so when you're going vertically, I would say um, no more than, well, on four ply yarn on a machine like this is pretty forgiving. You'd probably get away with four, but to be on the safe side, two or three depending on how finickety your machine is. But you can get some pretty funky effects. And look, you can see it's even pulled the stitches when sort of made little holes in it. Um, I quite like that. I think that's quite funky. Um, but again, you will have to experiment yourself. So I hope that that was um, useful. Just to recap, when you're tucking, okay, it gathers loops of yarn into the, into the needles. It has a tendency to want to drop them on the sides. It makes it wider. And you don't want more than, um, preferably one, definitely not more than two, tucking needles backwards next to each other. And you don't want to tuck the same needle more than about three times, maybe four if you're pushing it, or if you're using slightly thinner yarn. Um, this is, by the way, if you've ever heard of a pass app, um, this is where the pass app owners have us, because um, you can, on a pass app, you can tuck up to 20 times with some types of yarn. They're really cool. You can make these massive, great bunches in it. 
I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. And I shall see you next time when we are going to play with Fair Isle. See you then.